your truth is going to make people uncomfortable. Hmm. It will. Yeah. But you can't think about that. You know, just cuz you're just cuz you're uncomfortable with me saying what happened to me, that's 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 your problem. That's not my problem. Yeah. You deal with it. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not not to live through yeah. it. Like just yeah. cuz you don't want to hear about it, I right. have to go through it. Right. Perfect. One of what's my your, biggest. What's, what, what's your background? Yeah. I'm from Lebanon. You're from Lebanon. Yeah. Okay. One of my biggest things is trying to make sure I pronounce a person's name right because it matters. It mattered to me growing up. Yeah. And right. I know that it matters to people, so I always want to make sure I pronounce the name. The right. the, the the immigrant mentality of me is always to let it slide. Yeah. Right. Right. That's it's like never never yeah. never correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And oftentimes you just end up changing it and going, oh, you can just call me Sam, for yeah. example, right? Because yeah. I think it's easier for. I don't like that though, because then it's easier for who. Easier for who? <laughs> right? Exactly. Everybody knows the answer to that. And that's why it's like, no, man, just... Because you have to... We we're done. Like, we're done. But we're, we have to learn names. We're done making you know? them easy. Yeah. For, like, like, for them. You have to learn names that are very yeah. hard to learn. Yeah. But like, and, they're, and they, we learn them and come roll off our tongue. But it's like when certain names don't, I guess, fall in a certain grid. Yeah. It's It's... Oh, just call me this because it makes it easier. It's like, yeah. No, man, struggle for a little bit. <laughs> what does Vinay mean? Vinay means uh, polite. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've been extremely polite th thus far, so unless oh, you, you have suddenly been. change. Yeah, okay. that's, that's credit to my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Vinay Vermani, welcome to the Genstock Pod. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Thank Thanks you for guys. coming through. Really Appreciate excited about you. having this conversation. You do a lot of incredible things, and a lot of things that are impactful in the sense of you're not just doing them to promote yourself you're doing them to promote a cause i feel and i, I think i can say that because the you're an actor you're a producer um are you co-founder of Un uninterrupted or you brought it to canada i brought it to canada brought it to canada yeah. why don't we start there what was sure. the the catalyst behind bringing something like that here so and thank you by the way for that introduction i, I really, really appreciate it and, and and like i said before the show i really love what you guys do uh i admire the conversations that you have which which are so important so and and, you. and again you're putting a spotlight on canadian talent which we don't really do enough mm -hmm. um i'm a big proponent of building our star system and getting our stories out there so thank you guys for doing what you do and i'm trying to do it in my own way thank okay. you uh uninterrupted is a athlete empowerment platform that was founded by LeBron James and Maverick Carter in uh, 2015 and it kind of came out of this uh, out of this time when LeBron was just told to shut up and dribble mm -hmm. I remember that. and uh, you know LeBron being LeBron and and and, and Maverick and, and and just all those guys are incredible guys they realized that there was a need for a platform in which athletes can control their own narrative where they can speak freely uh, they are not censored and they are uninterrupted and so what became a editorial site um, years ago is now a major content studio uh, a platform that stands for empowerment empowering athletes empowering creatives directors uh, those in front and behind the camera and we are honored that we are their first global expansion into Canada, uh, a country that uh, is incredibly diverse, that has amazing stories. And, and, and we're honored that now we're three and a half years in to this business. Uh, I feel that we have uh, told a lot of incredible athlete stories, sports stories, uh, stories about Canadian history. Um, you know, Black Ice, of course, was a, it's a big one. Mm. major momentum shift for us as a company it was a project that i had been developing and working for five plus years and um and we're very proud of of, of where we are that's incredible the mm -hmm. the i love the word empowerment mm -hmm. because i think that's such a an important thing for people that often feel disempowered right and that typically comes with being uh, an underrepresented group in a lot of different spaces particularly in hockey yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, 
the things that I learned on hockey culture and what um, specifically black athletes go through in the sport of hockey was um, it was heartbreaking. It was crushing to just be on set and produce that film. Um, you know, a big shout out to all the athletes that contributed and, and, and gave their voice to that film. Uh, athletes of past, present and future. And for me as a producer, it was it was one of the first times in my producing career where I realized like, um, you know, what does it mean to be an ally, right? And mm -hmm. I think what it means to be an ally for me in that capacity was that as a producer, I had to be a really great listener. Um, we had to create a set where all the athletes in our film, be it P.K. Subban, you know, the great Willie O'Ree, mm -hmm. Aki Maliu, Soraya Tinker, Sarah Nurse, I mean, it was, everybody participated in the film. We had to create a set, an environment where people felt safe to share their truths because they were trusting us with the story. 100%. And, uh, and for me, like you talked about, you know, uh, the impact and, 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 and thank you for, for, for saying that to me, but um, I, I, I realize that when you're in this business of, of, of making content, film, television, no matter how big or no, how, no matter how big or, how, or, or how small, we have a responsibility. And, and I take that responsibility very seriously. Why do you feel that that is a responsibility you need to shoulder? Why is this whole thing important? Um, because I think stories are important. Stories matter. Truths matter. Um, I think that, you know, I'm very blessed to be doing what I'm doing. I know how hard it is. And um, if I have that even little bit of ability to get something greenlit and made, I want it to be impactful. I want it to be uh, something that is timeless, and I want it to be that can evoke real change. And and honestly, Black Ice is something that I think, um, not only for myself as a producer, but our entire team, I think it's going to be the most important film I ever make in my career. Wow. And I knew that going into it. Um, you know, because you can't get that film wrong. Yeah. It can't seem... Um, it can't seem overtly packaged. It can't seem like somebody else is guiding the narrative. Uh, it can't seem that we're censoring the players from from speaking their truths. Hmm. It has to be raw. It has to be real. And I, it was also one of the first times in my producing career where I knew that there were a lot of people, individuals, institutions that didn't want that film made. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine so. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know... I, I, I really had to find the strength and the courage, which which I got from the players, really. Um, and our director, Hubert Davis, who's an incredible filmmaker, our partners, you know, Drake, LeBron, Maverick, um, Future, who, who really trusted us and put their name. I had a lot of support, but I knew that um, this had to be fearless. And was there something that stuck out to you? Something that you didn't know and sort of just popped up and you're like... Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean, lots of things. Um, but I think, you know, for me, the film was about looking at hockey as a larger conversation to society and really defining what systemic racism is and how it functions in our society. And from the very beginning, the thought process was if we as Canadians let hockey define us, domestically globally you know we're all about hockey hockey culture you know it's mm -hmm. it's, it's so cliched now mm -hmm. but if hockey is culturally so problematic where every single day week we hear these stories of racism violence homophobia etc mm -hmm. etc sexual harassment sexual harassment then what is that saying about us as canadians yeah. Yeah. here we are that. like oh you know yeah. this sport defines us and hockey's in our blood and it's in our you know, and this is what represents it's our number one sport, and everybody loves hockey. And it's like, well, then you see all the other stuff, right? So there was that, and then there was also history. You know, the film also explores the Colored Hockey League of the 1800s, and it talks about the contribution that the Black community in Nova Scotia at that time made to hockey. You know, the first slap shot ever being taken by a Black hockey player. Organized hockey and interleague play created by the Colored Hockey League. The speed of the play. Uh, goalies going down to um, save a puck on their knees. These are all innovations that came from black men and women at that time. 
why aren't we taught this? Why aren't we taught about that importance of the league, that that league was um, also a symbol of black communication, black mobilization, black entrepreneurship at that time? Why aren't we taught those things in our history books? So it also made me question, well, what else is being guarded from us? Hmm. You know? And, and finally, the film's also a discussion about when people of color are let into spaces, are they really let in? Yeah. Or are they let in in a way that is very predatory? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let in for the sake of saying they're let in, yeah. but really. So that's what I mean. I mean, I, c- I could go on and on, and this could become the Black Eyes podcast. <laughs> but, you know, so as you can see, there's there's a lot to unpack there. But, you know, again, I want to thank all of our partners. I want to thank the audiences all across the country uh, to win People's Choice at TIFF. Yeah. Um, Congratulations is, on that, by the way. Is such an honor because, and again, that award means the most for me ever because it is the people and audiences that vote. Mm-hmm. So that is uh, really, really special. Incredible. Yeah. How did it feel when you, when you won that? So I was asleep. <laughs> when you got the news, yeah. <laughs> I got the call. So, so we had had uh, a really long week with all the premieres and press junkets and days and, and just kind of making sure the film was you know delivered on time it was the first you know and you're also filtering through all the reviews and all the feedback yeah. and everything there's so many people in town so it was that sunday it's the last sunday of tiff and uh i get a call from our studio and it's about 9 30 and and i was asleep and they said how quickly can you be at uh tiff bell Lightbox? and and they were like why what's going on and they're like you just want people's choice <laughs> and i'm like well, i just jumped out of bed i threw on a hoodie and i just ran and so um but again for me like i'm that kid that stood in lines at rush lines at tiff to like watch my favorite movies and see my favorite movie stars you know mm-hmm. like i was you know um like tiff and the movies at tiff have have influenced me so much so like i can't tell you how surreal it was to be like this you know uh, cinephile kid that loves movies and loves this festival and then all of a sudden get a call that a film you produced has won you know people's choice which is one of the most prestigious awards you can win in film yeah um so you know dreams dreams do come true they do <laughs> that's, absolutely that's, that's, they do but you got to work for it yeah. well you're also an actor you love films you're an actor you're a yeah. producer have you ever directed no i i do you want to Ah, uh, I do. I can see the and eyes and like I, light up. That was a, yes. <laughs> and I've and I've dabbled with it a lot. Um, I mean, I've I've been blessed to work alongside some of the best directors uh, in this country and in the world. Because my father was a producer, so I grew up on yeah. a lot of his sets as well. Um, so I've I I love working with directors. I respect what they do tremendously. I think I'll direct. Uh, the day when I find a story that is so personal to me, mm. something that is I can just see it and I can envision it, um, and 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 I think that's the day I'll, I'll I'll direct it when I see the entire film in my head and I'm so confident about it. But again, what I've learned about directing is is one, it's it's about confidence, it's about respect and collaboration on set, uh, it's also constant problem solving like constant constant <laughs> like and everything going wrong all at once it's yeah. it's it's amazing like you know anytime you produce a major feature film which i've which i've done several times it's like you're in prep for three months and you know you have a hundred people working on your sets your costumes your script your locations etc et so and day one when cameras roll mem- this is weeks and weeks of prep it's like this is going wrong this is going wrong this is going wrong this is going on you know uh, the weather change or you can't look down this street or the actor wants to change his lines or there's 50 things going wrong and a director's job is constantly problem solving. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so you really need to be quick yeah. and uh, extremely confident. Walk me through the role of a producer because typically I've, I've always understood mm-hmm. the role of a producer being the person that supplies the funding but I yeah. know there's a lot more to it. Oh, there's a lot that. more to it. There's a lot more to it. So, so I'm a producer and i feel my job is curation okay i think a great producer has to be a great curator somebody who finds the material finds the stories the ip the scripts um for me it really starts with that of 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 somebody who is immersed in 
uh, actually finding the stories mm -hmm. and finding the writers. So I think first and foremost, that's the job of a producer is to find the stories. And then it's about really surrounding that project with the right team. And for me, the first stop is to go to the director because I think a producer and director have to be hand in hand mm -hmm. because a director is really the captain of the ship. He's He or she is your visionary that's going to bring it to life, um, you know, visually, aesthetically, um, you know, just, just in every way that it's formed from, from what you see on screen. Yeah. Uh, a job of a producer is also the financing of it to make sure that you find the right partners. And what I take really seriously as a producer is the accountability to your partners. If, if, if anybody's investing even $1 in my project, I take that so personally because mm -hmm. you're playing with people's money. Serious and, thing. And mm -hmm. accountability is the biggest thing in a producer's career is that you have to respect that. You have to respect your financiers because that's what's going to lead to your next and your next and your next. So that's very important. Um, and, and, and really, I mean, as a, as a producer, you're just seeing the overall big picture. You know, you're making sure that the project's moving at a good pace, it's on time, it's on budget, um, you know, things are moving smoothly. You know, it's also a bit of problem solving and putting out fires. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, essentially from the day it's inception of the project or whatever you think you're going to make to the final delivery to when, you know, you call, you know, your studio and you say, hey, the film is being delivered. Uh, that's really, it's, it's really the whole thing. Almost like project management. Of course, yeah. 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 It's a lot of different hats. To yeah. Wear, right? like, what is, <laughs> yeah. What is your what hat do you wear that is? I was gonna say your favorite, but what is one you put on? And you just need the most, like you feel the most uncomfortable in, but you just want it to fit properly. Business conversations. Okay. Yeah, I've I've never been somebody that's that's really good with numbers. Okay. And, yeah, I and, feel you on that one. And, and <laughs> I feel the whole you on that one, business and contracts and business affairs and everything like that. But that that is super important. Um, but what I realize is you have to surround yourself with smart people. Yeah, you know, people that know. always be the, the <laughs> yeah. dumbest in the room. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have no ego. I have no shame in saying. I don't know this. Can I, you look at this from me? I want the smartest people working for for us for me for our production uh and yeah like you said you know like uh, you know that very cliched saying is you know this the stupid question or the dumb question is the one you don't ask like mm -hmm. that's that's literally life that's like the most true thing yeah. ever like ask yeah that's the only way you're gonna learn so i have no yeah. i've never had that like hesitation to be like hey can you explain me how this works or how this like recoupment schedule works or how this you know, clause works in this contract or whatever it may be. Um, so I, I've, I've no shame and, and no hesitation. <laughs> yeah. and, and if, and if I don't, if I, I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't know what you don't know at the same time, right? Exactly. Sometimes you, you go through certain situations and then something comes up and you're learning it for the first time, but you never knew it existed. Of course. Of course. What happens in the moments where you wake up, you're putting on the, the hat of the day but you're just not feeling it that day. And it's just, you're hitting a wall, brain fog, oh, you name it, and all shit's going to hell around you and you are you you gotta get ready. That's a tough one, right? Yeah. That's a tough one. So, you know what I learned early on in my career? So uh, I, was, I, was, I was an actor, I started off as an actor and uh, I had the incredible opportunity and responsibility of acting in a film called Breakaway in, 2011 with Russell Peters and Rob Lowe and uh, uh, Camilla Bell. It was a fantastic cast. Uh, Drake was in it actually as well. He had a little <laughs> cameo in it. And it was known as the Indian ice hockey film at the time. It did okay. it did very well in Canada. It was kind of a you know cult film. Yeah. And so Russell was actually our first guest. Yeah, yeah, I saw year. that. I saw that. Um, so Essentially, how and I'm, and I'm going to get to your answer of your of your uh, of, of 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 what you just asked. But so I was the lead in that film, mm -hmm. and essentially, when you have your call sheet come out, you know, because I was the lead character and I had the most scenes and et cetera, I was number one on the call sheet, right? And the director of the film, fantastic director, he'd made films like Mighty Ducks and and, and, okay. and really great films. It's a great movie. Um, yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so before we started, he said to me, Vinay you know, you're number one on this call sheet. And I don't think you know what that means, but that's a great responsibility. That means that everybody on this set takes their energy from you. 
because this film is about your character. You're also the producer of the film. And your energy, um, the way you carry yourself on set, everything, everybody here is working for you to support you, to empower you. So if you're an ass <laughs> and there are going to be some days where you're tired yeah. and, you know, the hockey schedule, because shooting hockey is tough and your body's going to be sore and it's going to be long and whatever it may be, because sets are like, you know, you're all this 16, 18 hours a day. Yeah. But if you start to dip, the 150 people working on the set, their energy starts to dip. Hmm. So what I realized is if, if you're in a position, um, whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're whatever role that you're in, if you're manager, whatever it is, um, you have to realize that the responsibility comes from you. And, and, and there are days where, you know, you're tired and you don't want to do whatever it is, but you realize, no, this is, this is responsibility. And there's mm. so many people there relying on you and your energy that you, that they have to feed off of. So I think being an actor early on in my life taught me the importance of just keeping the energy up and realizing that the set is going to take their energy off of you, which is so important. There's a resilience in that. Of course. You yeah. got to learn to to fight through when you yeah, know, the but, mind and the body. But but also like um it doesn't seem like work. Mm. <laughs> if you that always helps. <laughs> it, right. And, and 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 I'm really blessed because to me going to set or going to sit in, in an edit lab or going to sit with writers or going to sit with my team and ideating things or pitching a brand on a new series or whatever it may be, it's fun. Yeah. And so if you're having fun, it doesn't feel like work, right? Mm. And so for me, I don't I don't even think about it like that anymore, right? Where it's like it's like a drag to get it. No, it's like some days like I'm so excited at night in bed because I'm like, I can't wait to go in and pitch this thing. I can't wait to go on set tomorrow and see how we film this scene and what's gonna happen. What's that magic that's gonna happen? Yeah. Or, you know, so Hey, if you if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life is what they say. Right? That's it. I get that too because even we filmed earlier today, and then someone's asked me, "Said, well, that's a lot." I was like, "Doesn't really feel like a lot because it's like it's mm -hmm. you get to have a nice, authentic conversation with somebody who's real twice." Hundred <laughs> like, you know, like, percent. Like how is how how is and that? We don't have enough yeah. of those types of conversations yeah. in general anymore. Yeah, everything is exactly. very surface level. Yeah, the conversations are surface level, which is why. I appreciate some of the work that you guys do because you're having those authentic conversations. The athletes are empowered, as you say, to have those authentic conversations. Yeah, yeah. Completely no, raw. And absolutely. And, and, and again, I mean, you know, uh, we've, we've been very lucky to produce a lot of athlete documentaries so, so quickly. Um, you know, in, in, in three years, we did Sergi Baca's documentary mm -hmm. uh, when he went to the Congo uh, right after the... Uh, uh, 2019 championship we did Fred Van Vliet's documentary mm -hmm. uh, during his uh, um, free agency and we had cameras on him and just how he like negotiated that deal and kept betting on himself and kept doubling nice. down and, and everything like that it has to inspire you oh I mean Chris like, Boucher's yeah. documentary yeah. I mean we just put that out two months ago and, and him being homeless and only starting to play basketball when he was 20 and making it the level that he has um, you know Haley Wickenheiser and so many amazing individual sports docs we've been able to do, but yeah, no, it's so inspiring, yeah. and, and you see the the determination um, and the greatness. But I think what's common in all those docs that we've done and, and all the subjects that we've been able to cover and talk to is that it's just the self belief, right? Like it's 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 really the power of the mind of just mm. being like, you know, like I got this, mm. like yeah. you know, and and that's and that's amazing just to have that. It is inherent a, trait just to be like no i'm 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 great and i'm destined for greatness absolutely and it, it is that level of self-belief where you know to someone on the outside they'll look at you and be like you're, you're just being crazy at this point but it's like no no no, no. i know where i'm headed i know what i'm doing you i know what i'm working. crazy yeah like okay cool i am crazy i'm delusional it's like, <laughs> yeah because because yeah. you because you it's like kind of because it's the opposite you have to think of the opposite of i guess the norm is like yeah i'm crazy to think that i'm not gonna be the hamster in the wheel Okay, cool. I'm crazy. You're going against the norm. I'm going against yeah. the grain, like because you got to believe it, right? Yeah. And it's like it's cause, just because you believe it doesn't mean it's going to come true. But if if it's going to come true, it's whoever comes true to because they believe in it for you. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's 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 interesting. I've I've um, 
I've 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 been fortunate to be around a lot of great people, and um, and the one common trait that I, I I find in them is that they're obsessed, <laughs> like like literally whatever the craft is, whatever the field is, yeah. they're obsessed with it, um, obsessed at um, refining their craft, but also learning more about it. And then getting into this meditative state where they are obsessed with just perfecting it. Is that where you are? Yeah, for sure. Mm. For sure. I um, There's not a night that goes by where I don't watch something or I don't consume some form of content or something that I'm interested in. Okay. Um, whether it's a movie, a series, a documentary, uh, could be you know, something on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to consume something every day. I need to learn something every day. I need to appreciate and learn and be like, okay, how did they edit this? How, what's the story? How did they tell yeah. this? How did they get into this doc? How did they pace it? Like, I'm I'm obsessed with that. I'm obsessed with watching content. Um, and you have to, because that's my business, mm. right? So reading scripts, I, 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 I read a lot of scripts. Um, Sometimes I'll even go back and read screenplays of films that are old and very successful. Just because I want to understand on the page what made how them. it was written, how it was paced. Mm. Um, so it, so you, you just have to be. I mean, when we're making a film and editing a film, I'm watching the dailies constantly. I'm watching cuts constantly. I'm watching, you know, um, it, you, 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 you honestly just have to uh, let it consume every part of your being. And I know that sounds a little... <laughs> but it's it's you it's it's so true. Well, it's it sounds so a little to to the people that don't think in those terms and are you know living in an average way when they're capable of so much more. Yeah, and and I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 ambitious, but I'm also extremely competitive and not competitive against anybody else, against against myself. And and you know, I'll I'll sometimes just you know run off to New York for a couple of weeks and take a screenwriting course. Or, or a Very producer cool. course, or, I'll, mm. or, you know, or I'll just go do, you, you know, it's like, I want to keep educating myself, mm. um, you know, experience new things, you know, watch new things, go watch a play, go watch, you know, something off, something off Broadway that's interesting. You know, it's go to Yuck Yucks on a Tuesday when it's, you know, improv night and just hear people get up and tell stories and just hear their experience. I mean, yeah. it, it's, I'm just, uh, that's what I do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. again, it's, it's. Um, you know, that's how I actually, I found, um, an incredible writer for us who's actually writing, uh, you know, a few things for me now is I was at Yuck Yucks and I just saw this guy get up there and I loved the way how he observed the world. I thought it was really funny and, and, and earnest and smart. And I was like, Hey, do you want to try writing a little something for us? He's like, <laughs> sure. You know? Nice. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just fully immersed in it at this point. Yeah. I think you have to be. Yeah, absolutely. You have to, you have to dive right into it. hundred percent. Is there something that you're not currently doing that you want to take on? Oh wow, that's a that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not not really, not really. I Nothing. Mean, no, I mean I'm I'm always open to different opportunities and different things. Right. Um, but in a way, also, I don't really get into businesses that I don't really know a lot about. Fair. You know, um, sound practice. Yeah. I have a lot of friends that dabble in different investments and put money here, put money there, or, you know, at NFTs, you know, you put money in NFT or whatever, whatever that whole craze was. I don't even know it. And, um, many different things, Night, <laughs> nightclubs. I have people that approach me all the time. Hey, put money in my restaurant and this and that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was the NFTs that got him. The man's choking yeah, got him. on water. Yeah, listen. <laughs> Look, you know, we all work very hard. I work very hard. And um, I don't want to experiment. Yeah. If I don't know the business, and also if I don't have that willingness to learn and want to be the best and, and succeed at it, I don't want to put money into it. Mm. But the other thing I can tell you is if you depend on other people to make money for you and trust them with your money, never going to happen why because nobody's going to be accountable to you you have to be accountable to yourself mm -hmm. and you got to have the knowledge to be, to ask the questions and 
you know, ask for that transparency, but also understand the business. That's just that's just my experience. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't trust any of. I'm sure there's a lot of great people out there. I have a lot of great friends, but it's just if if I don't have control, if I don't have transparency, and also if I don't have even some basic understanding of that business, I'm not investing in it. Hmm. You know, um, like again, and 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 this might be rambling on, but even the NFT thing. Hmm when NFT art was going on and this and that, I love art, but I love tangible art that has a story to it, that has a history to it. It's a piece that's, you know, um, like like you're buying a piece of history, mm -hmm. symbolic of something. Who is, who is the painter? Who is, you know, you can feel the textures, you can see it. I never understood, like, and nobody <laughs> could explain to me, like, you know, how is this, like, what is, what is this? Maybe because I'm a story-driven guy. Right. And so, you know, I like, I could never yeah. understand that. I could never understand NFT art or right. digital. Like I just never understood it because I was because I really am so interested in something that's real and that's something I can hold and something that I understand of the story of it. Yeah. You know, because stories are important. Why are stories so important to you? It just it just changes the way we can look at the world. It changes the way how we can look at each other. Um, we can learn. Mm -hmm. We can learn from the past, and if we don't learn from the past, then we're not growing. Why do you think, like, a lot of the conversation pieces that you're having and, and using Black Ice, for example, mm -hmm. the experiences of black hockey players talking openly about these things are not things that men typically do a good job talking about in general. So to get them to go on, have it filmed and right. talk about it, really expose themselves, talk about that yeah. at risk to their future careers, endeavors, all of those things. How do you... How do you help get men to those places where they can talk about these things? That's a great one. And and I think we've we experienced that with a lot of athletes too, right? Hmm. Um, not just on Black Ice, but a lot of the projects we've done of, of athletes sharing uh, issues around their mental health, um, you know, uh, their their families, financial literacy is a big one. It's a huge right? one. Yeah. Which, you know, I've I have the pleasure of hosting a show called Needing Dough on our platform where we talk to athletes about financial literacy and mindset and 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 lessons with money. So I'm 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 really happy that we can have these conversations that are so inspiring and so important. I think it's just the way you approach the individuals to talk about it. And and like I said, um it's about just creating an environment and creating a show and creating a setup like what you guys have here. Mm. Where where we just feel safe to talk about it. Mm. That's what it's a lot of it is that too. Like, I don't, you know, I mean, I mean, we just met today, but I mean, I'm following your guys' work for quite a while, but here we are today and we're having this open conversation like we've known each other for years, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's it, right? Mm -hmm. You just have to create that environment of, 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 of people feeling safe uh, to share their experiences. And again, how we approach it at Uninterrupted is, is also that we're not going to guide the narrative. We're not going to we're not going to tweak it or censor it or, you know, um, and also we treat our athletes as, as as our partners. We send them cuts. We mm -hmm. we want them to see it. We send them the questions. We want them to be vested in it so that mm -hmm. they feel comfortable. Yeah, well, that's that's their face, their mm -hmm. name. You know, they, they got to live with the the outcomes of yeah, those conversations. Yeah. No, but it's been um, you're right. I think I think for um for us as men that that shy away sometimes and and are hesitant to talk about those issues it's it's it has been uh an incredible journey and and, and again a continued responsibility for us at uninterrupted to make sure that we empower uh our athletes empower our talent empower our filmmakers empower our creatives to to have these tough conversations so being so close to those conversations seeing them firsthand speaking to the athletes creating the film mm -hmm. Do you feel, or where do you think we are in Hulk, hockey culture specifically when it comes to inclusion? Because there's a lot of conversations around how do we make hockey open for everyone. Yeah. I've scouted at the OHL level, and I've seen the challenges in minor hockey. I've seen the challenges at the junior level. And I imagine that that, does, that stuff doesn't just go away at the, the national mm. level. They just get swept under the rug better. Where do you see hockey culture in relation to that? Um, no, look, I'm not 
some authority on hockey. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't, this uh, is very much like and, where, and, like and, your and, perspective yeah, on it. And 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 again, I I uh, you know, I don't I don't I don't know the sort of systems in the leagues as well as 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 I should. But what I've learned and just, you know, observing um, from the experience that I have of producing black ice and just being around athletes within the sport is um, I think that what hockey needs is, first of all, it needs clear disciplinary action when an incident occurs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Mm -hmm. that's the first thing is that there's, forget uh, a rule book. There's no even rules. Like there's no, there's no definitive action. That if something happens, this is the punishment, or mm-hmm. this is the consequences of what's going to happen. So, while we were filming Black Ice, we met this 16-year-old boy uh, out in Halifax, who had three racist incidents happen to him in one weekend at a hockey tournament. And him and his father kept appealing, 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 called terrible things, attacked, etc. Just terrible things happened to him. Um, and. The answer that he kept getting back from his governing body of, of of that hockey league that he was in is, we don't have the resources to deal with this at that time. What does that mean? <sighs> how do you not have yeah. the resources to, like, if somebody fights or there's a violent incident, you know what it is. You know what the suspension is. Boom, you're out. You, you know what that disciplinary action is. How is it that when it comes to race, you so don't, don't have the not. resources and you don't have a proper disciplinary action if an incident like that occurs yeah so i think that's important i think obviously education is important from those minor levels um that's extremely important um but yeah i think i think really what it is is it's is it's also just having more athletes come out and share their experiences and i think that's why our film was so impactful um was because a lot of people had not heard these stories before. Mm-hmm. They 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 couldn't believe that these things happened and these players carry this um this 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 pain, this baggage, this you know, everyday feeling, right? Of of isolation, of humiliation, of you know, um so I think that's really important is 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 for people to speak up and share their truths. Is that why uninterrupted focuses so much on those conversations absolutely absolutely and i think um you know and 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 like i said i mean you know and and i and i and i learned this too over the last couple years is that your truth is going to make people uncomfortable Hmm. it will yeah but you can't think about that you know just because you're just because you're uncomfortable with me saying what happened to me that's 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 your problem that's not my problem yeah you deal with it. Yeah, I'm not like I'm not have to live. Yeah, it. like just because yeah. you don't want to hear about it, I right. have to go through it. Right. Yeah. So that's my, you know, again, I'm sure there's a lot more systemic things, but that's just my general observations. Yeah. So, uninterrupted. You're an actor. You're a producer. Is there anything else in there that that you're currently working on? Um. Yeah, I think I think for me, I sort of split my time between Uninterrupted, which is growing growing this incredible platform uh, that we've talked about, also diversifying it. And we've been working with athletes for the last couple of years, but we are diversifying the platform in terms of musicians, artists, entrepreneurs. Okay. We want to we want to grow the Uninterrupted brand yeah. um, in a really big way. Um, so that's definitely happening, and then producing movies. Uh, finding scripts, uh, optioning IP books, uh, getting into television. So I have a couple of features in development, a scripted series in development. Um, just continuing to, you know, try to tell amazing stories, stories that are uh, important, um, stories that are powerful, but also balancing it out too because I do really like, you know, fun commercial broad comedies as well. So, hmm. you know, I like to I like to dabble in that as well and just find things that are heartfelt and easy. You know, I, lo- I love the uh, I love the occasional romantic comedy as well. So I love that. I love that. I have I have produced one rom com in my life and that was for my mother and yeah. she absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I you know I I, th- I think you have to balance it out, right? Yeah. And and so for me that's sort of the focus right now is is just growing this uh, this film, television, media, 
business. Um, we're doing a lot of work for brands. We find that uh, brands all want to be storytellers right now. Mm -hmm. I think I think gone are the days of the 15, 30 second spots on linear television because nobody's really watching. Can't tell you how many people I talk to that are just like cutting cable in their house. Yeah, now, right. Yeah. Well, streaming services. And and a, and a lot of brands want to empower incredible stories. So that's really refreshing. You know, we're working with different financial institutions or different automotives that are like, no, we don't want a 15 second spot. We want a four to five minute story on on this. And how does our brand align with the story in this individual? So that's mm. been a new thing for me because I don't have a marketing background. We have a great team that runs our branded division um, and it's amazing to learn from them. All I can do is just weigh in on, does the story have heart? Does the story have a great payoff? Is it, you know are the characters interesting? Does it does it flow well? Does mm -hmm. is it paced well? But that's really refreshing. Is I think that all these lines are getting blurred now, and um, and I think that there's a big emphasis on storytelling uh, from 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 all different sides. How do you balance all that? Like all the different things <laughs> that are going on. Like that's like how do you balance all that without working the 12 to 16 hour days i i i I'd really zone in on the things that i'm passionate about okay so so that's first and foremost is is i really pick the projects that that i know i can deliver value to and that i'm super passionate about and immersed in uh and then it's really about having a great team we have a fantastic team um and 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 really it's just about checking in on certain things and uh but no, I never, I never feel like it's daunting or I'm tired. It's just, you know, I like because there's passion there. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I honestly like to have a lot of things on the go. Like I love to have multiple projects and a lot of sticks in the fire. Because when I was acting, I, I, I realized how frustrating it was to have idle time. Mm. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll, and I'll, and I'll tell you that because as an actor, and maybe this was one of the reasons why, why I don't think that I. I, I continued with it after a certain point. I, I moved into producing and I moved into the business of film because as an actor, you know, you'll do this film or you'll get a gig or you'll get a job and it's great. But then the very next day, it's like you're waiting for the phone to ring yeah. or you'll mm -hmm. go audition and you're waiting to get that call back. And, and A, you're going to hear a lot of no's. Like I tell people who want to act, I said, look, you got to have a super thick skin. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to hear a lot more no's then you will yeses and you're going to have a lot of idle time so how you choose to fill that time and better yourself or diversify yourself or learn something else is so important but just sitting around and waiting i can't do that mm -hmm. i mean maybe it's the immigrant parents that <laughs> you know it's just it's just you you're not you're not going to sit around and wait yeah, there's no sitting around, so, period. <laughs> there's no sitting around. Like, I'm not like, oh, I just auditioned and came back, so I'm just going to chill and hang yeah. out. And, no, like, so I don't think that, maybe that's why I felt acting wasn't for me in, 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 in certain ways. But I also felt like at that time when I was acting seven, eight, ten years ago, whatever it was now, um, there also wasn't uh, an emphasis on diversity. Mm, and there wasn't yeah. an emphasis on diverse casting. There wasn't this... Like right now, if there are actors listening to this to this to this show, it is the best time to be uh, an actor of color right now, um, because right now things are actually being written uh, for you mm. from the get go, mm -hmm. um, and that's unique, right? Absolutely. Because I was sick and tired of going for an audition when on the page is clearly written for a white guy yeah. and you're going to say all ethnicities welcome but me Vinay Vermani South Asian I know on the page it's written for Greg Caucasian male 30s I know what's who that's written for yeah, right. I know who I know what your casting directors are looking for I know what your directors are looking for they are looking for that and when you say all and all ethnicities welcome what you want to do is just fill up a room to say, hey, look, we, we brought yeah. everybody out. But I'm right away disadvantaged when I go read for that part because I'm not what you envisioned on the page. Yeah. So, you know, and my beef with casting directors and writers, all, <laughs> and I never did this in any of my films, is would I ask uh, a white actor to come and read for a part named Raj? No. no. And say all ethnicities welcome. Hey, 
white guy, come read for come 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 read for Raj. Right. No, because I envision what a Raj who who a Raj is and who he looks like. And there's also nothing wrong with with that, right? Yeah. Like if that's what you're looking for, it, that's it, what you're it, looking for. No, but, but those the are the best stories when your characters are written specifically for a reason. Like right. that character's Indian because it matters to the story. Mm-hmm. Or that character's Chinese because it's important for that story. Don't write a generic character and bring in a bunch of BIPOC actors and say, hey, figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> right? Like It's almost like lazy writing. Yeah, that it's, it, that's exactly what it is. It's lazy writing. Yeah. It's it's not thoughtful. So again, I had my beef with the system and how things were, but look, things have changed tremendously. Mm-hmm. And right now, uh, it is it is a great time to be diverse. It's a great time to be unique and different, and 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 just you know have a different set of life experiences culturally, especially, and come in because, um, you know, writers and casting directors and directors and networks and streamers they they are really genuinely looking for that. How did you make that transition from like actor to, you know, producing? Um, so I was always very interested in the business of filmmaking. And uh, my father was a, a producer. Mm-hmm. He he produced a lot of Canadian films, Indian films, and Bollywood. So mm. so my summer jobs were were working, <laughs> working on <with> pop. sets, yeah. <laughs> you know, like doing different things, like sitting in costume departments, sitting in lighting departments, sitting behind the cameraman, like going and knocking on the actor's door and saying, you know, hey, it's ready for you, and walking cool. around, whatever it was, just yeah, on hanging set. out on set, just working odd it's jobs cool. and, and being yeah. on set. Like how else do you like what a yeah. amazing education and and all throughout my childhood it's you know actors were in the house or directors were talking about scripts or cuts were being watched and mm. and so i just became very immersed in it um and and i absolutely loved it so i always had a little bit of knowledge and understanding of the business of filmmaking and this idea of of creating a project and structuring a project and and and, and getting the whole film or whatever it is up uh you know up and going and then uh, so I think I always knew that I was going to do that at some point, mm. and then um, and then acting happened, which was which was which was great, and I'm very thankful for it. I had incredible experiences, successful films that gave me the ability to to network and meet a lot of great people. Um, but I think once I got that opportunity to produce, I realized that this is a great opportunity to transition, and and sometimes I think did I transition too early? Uh, could I have done it later? But in life, I think if you have an opportunity, so the opportunity to produce, the opportunity to run this incredible company that is uninterrupted, um, it came at a time, and I had to make a clear decision and say, "Look, you know, uh, I'm I'm getting this opportunity, and I may not get it again." And 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 so that transition kind of organically happened. Mm. Carrying the weight of running uninterrupted Canada on your shoulders, you know, the the responsibility, the you know, you owe it to the stories. How do you manage that responsibility day in and day out? You want to grow mm-hmm. it. You also want to protect it. You want to see it flourish, but you also don't want it to lose its way. Yeah, and you and you don't want to, um, you know, just tell every story, you know, and, and just sort of um, make certain business decisions and and. That, that necessarily don't complement the creative decisions. There is there is a lot of balance. There's a lot of weight to make sure that we green light the right stories and we really put our energy and focus on the right stories, the right athletes, uh, the right documentaries, uh, working with the right partners, the right brands. Uh, it is a big responsibility. Honestly, it is. It, it, it really weighs on me heavily, especially after Black Ice, because now, um, and, and, and again, like this is a good problem to have when you when you make a film like Black Ice that impacts so many and creates so much conversation and, and goes on to win TIFF and et cetera, et cetera. It's like, well, well, where now? Right? Cause you're it's like it's a standard, you know? And, and so that is sometimes a feeling that is, um, you know, it, it, it causes a little bit of anxiety and a little bit of insecurity where you're like, cause you want to keep finding things at that level and creating projects at that level. And so, but for me, that just motivates me to, to work harder, work smarter, uh, be more aware, um, you know, and and just work harder and, and and kind of finding and searching for those stories. How do you deal with the anxiety and the insecurity when it happens to you? Do you journal, self talk. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one there. That's it's a, a good, good one. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. I, honestly, I think it's just being surrounded by a really great family. Okay. Family and friends. For me, yeah. that's that's um, therapeutic for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very, very close to my family. I spend a lot of a lot of time like that's my that's my social life you know is is my parents my sister my uh nephew my girlfriend you know it's it's that's hmm. that's that's family right do you mix business and family uh no and i learned that from my dad what's the lesson it there? never it never ends well <laughs> it never <laughs> it ends doesn't, well no it doesn't end well i think that um you know and 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 again i think like it's it's not that i'm I'm not opposed to it, but it does get messy, right? When you start hiring family or or very close friends, I would I would rather try my best to support somebody who I'm close to in a different way. But I think um, I think that's always gets very tricky. Yeah, things go sour. Yeah, there's a personal relationship. Oh, like it's, yeah. Big yeah. How many how many close friends do you have ish, and how many is, would you say is too many? close friends like obviously you should yeah. have friends but like you always yeah. say you keep yours like you should only have a few close close-knit friends i i'm I'm, I'm i'm a big believer in that um do i have a big network yeah do i have a lot of acquaintances professionally personally yeah of course but i actually don't have a lot of friends hmm. um i don't even think i could count it on one hand and I think over the years, it's it's even gone less. Mm. Uh, you outgrow some people. You outgrow people. I'm also just always scared to to make new friends or. Why? Uh, I just have this constant fear of being let down. Hmm. You know, uh, expectations are really one of the worst things that you can have. You know, yeah. and so. Yeah, I I I'm not uh, I'm I'm not I'm not great at keeping friends i'm not great at having a lot of friends i I have a very like the friends that i have i've known since like high school and it's just a few of us especially in our business where it's tough like Mm -hmm. it's it's extremely competitive and sometimes you know people can get a little yeah a little weird you don't know it's not always real well i don't know you start to think like i is that person really happy for me are they really happy for my success (laughs) and that's and that's the other thing too is that i i'm just kind of like always a little guarded and and you know, so I'm 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 happy with you know, extremely small circle, private life. I don't think everything you do needs to be on social media. Actually, I make it a very conscious rule that, um, that I don't put anything about my personal life on social media. Not that anybody cares, but I just I just don't want to. Uh, I don't want to think that anybody cares about my personal life, but I I just don't want to. I don't want to mm. share mm. the things that I really really love or the people that I really really love on social because, that's that one part of your life are like that's for me yeah. you know that's that's mine like like i know that i don't need to broadcast it you know mm-hmm, i like that explanation of it i feel like that's the same for me and i have never yeah. been able to articulate it the way you just did it's for who for what yeah like you know? there's things that i'll put on social media that are very much part of the brand yeah that i'm that i'm building but then there's other things where like i don't post very much about my girlfriend because yeah. i'm like that's that's for me yeah, same. So, yeah, the way you, the way you've articulated <laughs> that, I like a lot. Look, at the end of the day, I think something like Instagram is one of the greatest professional tools we've been given mm-hmm. for free. Yeah, and it's for now, <laughs> right? Yeah, for now, <laughs> it's an amazing platform to build your brand. And what is Instagram? Instagram is a highlight reel of our lives, mm-hmm. professionally for mm-hmm. for for me at least, yeah. right? Um, and the way it uses us. I use it. It's yeah. as simple as that, right? Um, where, you know, these days before people want to even check what, what you do or who you are, they don't go to your LinkedIn, they go to your Instagram. Mm-hmm. It's true. Absolutely. So, yeah. so use it as such. Yeah. That's what I always say. So sometimes when I see a lot of young people posting crazy shit about partying and this and that and, and, and whatever, you know, I'm just like, why are you posting? Like, you know, people are... Like that's, a, that's what for me. I don't, I don't know. Maybe for me, because I think I, I look at it so professionally. Mm-hmm. I look at it as it's your brand, it's your career, it's a rep, it's a representative of 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 the things that you believe in from from a from a professional standpoint. People are going to judge you based on it. People are going to know, you know, do they want to work with you at that time? You know, and it has to have that feel for me at least. Mm-hmm. 
And, um, and yeah, like I, I don't think that, uh, people need access to every aspect of your life, especially the things that like you like really love. And I think if you really love those things, you are protective over those things and, and, you know, um, and, and I don't think everything needs to be shared. I like that. Yeah. I definitely agree with that. That's something that I, I ascribe does to. Your, does your girlfriend get mad at you? And a little you know bit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you so, you, you know too, yeah. That was a quick yes. Yeah. He's like, yeah. 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 We've yeah, had little, those conversations yeah, a, a few times. Yeah. <laughs> and you just say, baby, I love you so much. I just don't want to share you with the world. I just want, you know. <laughs> 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 Babe, when you listen to this, just stop listening at this point. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true, right? Like, because you want to, like, you want to keep that stuff for yourself because I a lot of what I do is socially public. Of course. That I want to feel like I have some privacy still. And you're right. It's not like everyone is paying attention or watching, right? It's all just numbers and highlight reels and all these things. But there's still some element of it of where I want to keep things. Like, this is my private life. You don't have to know about these things. It doesn't matter. Plus... I used to be the guy that every when I was in a relationship, my social media was filled with stuff about that. Mm. And then, you know, when I moved away from that, I was like, this is actually kind of refreshing because, you know, things don't work out. Life happens. Right. 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 And now what right. are you going to, you got to go there. You got to delete. You got to arc. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. want to deal with any yeah. of that. Look, and, and again, not to judge. I mean, each their own. Everybody has their own thing. Absolutely. You, should do your, you know, if, 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 if posting something, you know, makes you feel good about yourself, you know, it could be a new car you got or whatever, or your watch. I mean, wh- whatever it is, I don't, you know, guys post b- bunch of stuff like that for, you know, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, do it. I mean, Hey, look, do it. That's it's on it, you, it's but it's, it's, it's just not for me. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so it is what it is. But hey, thank you so much for coming through, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you. Appreciate this you. was uh, a really cool conversation. You guys are doing important and needed work thank you and i'm rooting for your success matthew you're rooting for his success don't speak no i'm <laughs> <laughs> i am rooting for your success um, thank you i uh always man. no i really really appreciate what you guys do and and um you know it's always nice just to kind of like share your experiences mm. and and your life experiences mm. and and hopefully um inspire people you know like it's it's all you can do yeah yeah i'm trying to find a way to end this that's uh, <laughs> nice and no but honestly poetic, thank you but, yeah. it, it, it's it, the the work that you guys are doing is so important because it moves the conversation forward and sometimes it may feel like that conversation moves forward just a half an inch but then every so often a black ice comes along and moves the conversation 10 feet forward yeah mm-hmm. and the half an inch matters just as much as the 10 feet. A hundred percent. Look, every story matters. Absolutely. And, and it's easy to say, be fearless and, and speak your truths and scream your truths and, you know, um, you know, make people feel uncomfortable because that's the only way change is going to, I know that's like those things sound easier said than done. I know, I know how hard it is. Trust me, I've struggled with it, um, you know, up until now. Um, but it's, it's so important. It is so important. Like like conversation um, and expressing those views are just so important to making that change, mm-hmm. you know. And um, and again, you know, I, I I I'm blessed for every opportunity. I take everything very seriously, you know. Um, for me, it's it's not business. It is it is personal, mm-hmm. and it has to be. Like whoever says that, like, oh, business is business, just business. Like that's 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 bullshit. A hundred percent. Honestly, it is. It is it is personal. Every time I make a movie or a documentary or something and I look at all those individuals' names that are on the credit list, it's, it's personal. My name's on that. It's fucking personal. I'm accountable to studios, networks, the audience. And for them, it's personal. So, you know, whoever said that is, is I don't I don't believe it. It's personal course because you're putting your heart and soul into these things no matter what it is no matter what business it is a thousand percent and that's a good poetic way there you go thank you for coming i really really appreciate it poncho thank you very much thank you everybody thank you